In this video, I will share a method I developed for myself some time ago for my several top-down sweaters. I call it a pearl transition from the neck ribbing to the body of a sweater because of how it looks and how it's done. I have another video about a similar method where it looks slightly different, so if you like, you can follow the link. With this method, I can have a very stretchy Italian custom edge which is great for turtlenecks, and then work my way down, and without breaking of the yarn, I can have a decorative transition that also prevents the neck opening from losing shape. The very important neck area is finished right away, at the very beginning of a project. I also made it double-sided, because I wanted to be able to wear my sweaters inside out. I used it with different yarn thicknesses, and with different kinds of ribbing, one by one and two by two. It looks nice and neat on both sides, not bulky at all. Also, I find it looks great with self-striping yarn, especially where the yarn changes colors. It provides a decorative contrast that resembles the look of a sewn on ribbing. And again, this is the wrong side, and it looks here like a decorative stitching. This is the transitional area between the ribbing and the neck opening, and without reinforcement, it can very easily lose its shape during wear because the ribbing is very stretchy, so it can end up looking like this. And this is the reinforced transitional area. It helps to hold the stitches, preventing them from stretching too much. Of course, depending on the yarn type, it can have some elasticity as well, but it will never stretch as much as the ribbing without reinforcement. And because the knitting in the round is essentially a spiral knitting, I had to brainstorm a bit to minimize the appearance of the jog. This is a jogless custom edge, and I wanted the transition to also look as smooth as possible. I did a lot of swatching, and this one looked the best to me. I will show how I did it step by step in the following tutorial. This is an improvised tiny turtleneck of a tiny sweater. My first stitch will be a pearl stitch. The yarn tail shows the beginning of the casting on. I'm putting the right hand needle tip out for convenience and also to secure the stitches and I'm preparing my working yarn. My first stitch is a pearl stitch. I'm using this uh, marker that looks like a very, very thin safety pin, and I'm placing it on the first stitch, so it will be easy to find later on. Next, I'm going to use a hook of the same size as the needle size for the body of the sweater. Insert the hook from left to right into the first stitch as if I'm knitting, yarn over, and pull out the first chain. Then insert again from left to right into the second stitch, yarn over, pull out, and pull this second stitch through the first stitch on the hook and continue. Hook from left to right, yarn over, pull out the stitch and pull it through the chain on the hook. One more time, insert the hook from left to right, yarn over, pull out and pull through the stitch on the hook. Essentially, this is a chain bind off that is done knitwise, as if knitting. One more stitch, 
yarn over, pull out, and through the chain on the hook. These are the last two stitches. I again insert the hook from left to right, yarn over, pull out the stitch, and pull it through the stitch on the hook. And the last stitch the same, yarn over, pull out, and pull it through the stitch on the hook. This was the first stitch of the round. And this is the first chain that came out of the first stitch of the round. And I'm going to do the first step. Knit front to back under both loops of the first chain. And then purl back to front under the front loop of the same chain. I insert the hook under both loops of the first chain, yarn over, pull out, and pull it through the chain on the hook. Next, I'm going to go back to front under the front loop of the same chain. And this hook is too big for that because I'm going to go through that chain second time. I'm taking a smaller hook for convenience. Place the working yarn in front and a little bit to the right so it's out of the way. Insert my hook under the front loop, back to front, and purl a stitch. I will not need this hook anymore. I'm taking it out, and I'm replacing it with a needle of the same size as I will use for the body of the sweater. My working yarn is in front and I'm going to purl under the front loops of the chains like this. Under the front loop of a chain and make a purl stitch. Again, under the front loop of the chain, make another purl stitch. Under the front loop, purl a stitch. Under the front loop of the following chain, make another purl stitch. These are the last three chains of the round. I'm only going to purl into these two chains, this one and this one, but not the last one. I'm pulling out the left hand tip for convenience. and purl into the first chain, the second chain, and that's it. I'm finished. And I return the left hand tip in its place. I will not be purling into the last chain because it will not look good. Instead, earlier I made an extra purl stitch here, so now I have the same number of stitches 
as at the beginning. In the beginning, I placed this marker on the first stitch of the round, and now I'm going to place it on the right hand needle tip. So I'm taking it off and closing and placing it on the right hand needle tip. So that's the beginning of my round. My working yarn is behind work and I'm going to slip the first stitch. That's how it looks at the back, working yarn behind that stitch. And I will continue knitting all the stitches. Tighten the first stitch. And continue knitting all the remaining stitches. So that's the loop at the front. And this is how it looks at the back. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun knitting. And I'll see you in the next video.